Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. As we learned in the last lecture, uh, the difference between males and females in humans is mostly decided by whether you have two X chromosomes or one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And those chromosomes are really different because the X chromosome is a lot bigger than the Y chromosome. And remember that difference in size means there's a lot more genes on the X chromosome than on the Y chromosome. Today, we are going to talk about what that means in terms of those genes that are on one chromosome and not the other. And that is our discussion of sex-linked traits. All right, so again, remember that that X chromosome is a lot bigger than the Y chromosome. Chromosomes are where the instructions are to build proteins. Those are called genes. Because of the difference in size, there are a lot of genes, a lot of instructions that are on the X chromosome, but not the Y chromosome. What type of chromosomes do we call these? They are allosomes because they determine the sex of an individual. But remember, most of those genes do things other than just make someone male or female. They control traits other than sex. So any gene that is on an allosome, an X or a Y chromosome, that doesn't control sex is called a sex-linked gene because it is connected to being male or female, but it is not necessarily determined by being male or female. So just because these are on the same chromosome they are related to sex, even though a lot of them might not have anything to do with sex, like having to do with how your blood clots or how your eyes can determine the difference between colors. Things that don't have anything to do with sex can be on these genes. So because many of these genes are found on the X chromosome and not the Y chromosome, there is a difference in how many alleles a person will have for these genes. Remember, normally, because we have two copies of each chromosome in our cells, we have two alleles for any given trait, whether it is height, whether it is eye color, whether it is hair color. For each gene, we have two alleles. If you are female and you have two X chromosomes, two of these bigger ones, you will still have two alleles for each of these traits. But if you are a male and you have an X and a Y, for these traits that are found on the sex chromosomes but aren't related to sex, you're probably only going to have one trait or one allele because it is going to be on your X chromosome and not your Y chromosome. So let that thing sink in. Everything we've done with Punnett squares so far has involved each box we fill in having two alleles. But now we have females that still have two alleles, but males that only have one allele for a trait because they've only got one X chromosome. This is why we find weird stuff happening with sex-linked traits. And sex-linked traits are just the traits that are controlled by these sex-linked genes. All right, so what does that mean for genetics? Males have one allele, females have two alleles. So luckily, when we talk about sex-linked traits, we get to go back to our traditional dominant recessive relationship. Remember that Mendelian genetics where we only had two traits for a character and there were only two different alleles. Uh, go back to notes 5.1.3 about predicting traits if you need a refresher on that. So there are three possible genotypes for Mendelian genetics and only two possible phenotypes. If you have two dominant alleles, if you are homozygous dominant, you are going to have the dominant trait. If you have two recessive alleles, you are homozygous recessive, you are going to have the recessive trait. If you are heterozygous, you have one of each allele, you are going to have the dominant trait. So this works great for females who are going to have two alleles for any of these sex-linked traits because they have two X chromosomes. But males only have one allele, so what's gonna happen for them? If you have a dominant allele, you're gonna show the dominant trait. If you have a recessive allele, you're gonna show the recessive trait. If you are a male, your trait is gonna be whichever allele you have because you only have one allele. You've only got dominant or recessive. Those are the only two options. So again, for our sex-linked traits, for females, we just get normal Mendelian genetics. You're either homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous. But for males that only have one allele, you can only be dominant or recessive. There is no homozygous, there is no heterozygous, 
because you've got one allele and not two. Why do we care about sex-linked traits? So as it turns out, there is a lot of sex-linked traits that are disorders, uh, things that mean your body doesn't work properly, and they are luckily recessive traits and not dominant traits. So that means that only people with the recessive trait will have the disorder. So if you look at these females with their traditional Mendelian genetics, the only way you will ever have the recessive order if you are a female is if you have two recessive alleles. But if you're a male, if you have any recessive alleles, you're going to have the recessive trait because you only get one allele. What this means is with these sex-linked traits, males are more likely to be affected. And there are lots of real-world examples of these disorders that show up more in males than in females. Uh, examples include hemophilia, red-green color blindness, and night blindness. Night blindness. There's another classic one that you definitely think of as being more true of males than females, and that is baldness. That's right. The reason that guys are more likely to be bald than girls is because baldness is a sex-linked recessive disorder. So because we are dealing with our traditional Mendelian genetics dominant recessive relationship, but with a little twist, we're going to go back to Punnett squares here and we are going to use hemophilia as an example. So as I said, hemophilia is a recessive sex-linked trait. It is in fact a sex-linked disorder. If you've never he heard of hemophilia, it is just a disease where your blood can't clot. That means if you get a little cut, you could bleed a lot, a lot, a lot, and possibly die from a relatively small cut. So the dominant allele, which is only on the X chromosome, that's X with a big H, produces normal blood clotting. You get cut, your blood stops bleeding just like normal. The recessive allele, X with a little h, produces hemophilia. Here's the twist. Because this is a sex-linked trait, the Y chromosome does not have an allele for hemophilia. Why does this matter? Why can't we just do a normal Punnett square? Why do we need to keep track of the X's and the Y's? Remember, we're talking about human genetics. And the only way we can have offspring, the only way we can have babies, is by crossing a male with a female. So with pea plants, where we didn't have to worry about sexes because they, they don't have sexes, uh, with our humans, we do have to keep track of those X and Y chromosomes and which allele each chromosome is on. So with the final setup of the problem, I'm going to show you how we do that. We've got two parents. We have a heterozygous female. So right there, heterozygous female. There's one parent. And we have a normal blood clotting male. There's another parent. So if the female is heterozygous, we have one big allele, one little allele. And again, those each go with our X chromosomes. And for the male, normal blood clotting, dominant trait. We have a dominant allele with our X chromosome and a Y with nothing. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, males have one X and one Y chromosome. That means, again, they will only have one allele for any of these sex-linked traits. So how would we set this up? Let's look at our Punnett square. And again, I am limited in my ability to do animations here uh, because I am working in PowerPoint, but I'm going to try to outline what I would do. So you can see that along the top, I put the heterozygous female. We've got X with a big H, X with a little H. Along the left-hand side, I put the alleles for my normal blood clotting male. We've got our Y chromosome and we've got our X with a big H. So those are our two parents, just like a normal Punnett square. Remember, to fill in each of the quadrants of our Punnett square, we simply take the parental allele up, uh, to the left of it and the parental allele from above it, and we put it in that quadrant. And you can see that I match the colors to kind of try to show you where each allele comes from in each of these crosses. We've done our Punnett square. Now we need to look at our genotypes and phenotypes. Just like with each new pattern of inheritance we have learned, there is going to be a little bit of different language with our genotypes and phenotypes. In addition to dominant recessive homozygous heterozygous, we now need to keep track of males and females. So the big letters, the X's and the Y's, those will tell you if they're male or female. Remember, two X chromosomes, like this one in the bottom left-hand corner, gives you a female, whereas an X and a Y gives you a male. 
In addition to those XYs, just look at the capital and lowercase letters. Capital for dominant alleles, lowercase for recessive. So let's run through the five possible genotypes and phenotypes, look at the probabilities of each according to our Punnett square. First off, we have X big H, X big H. The genotype for this one is homozygous dominant female. This would give us normal clotting because normal clotting is the dominant trait. And you can see here that there is exactly one quadrant, so that's 25%. Next, we have X little h, or X little h. This is a homozygous recessive female. Recessive trait is hemophilia. This will give us hemophilia. There are no heterozy there are no homozygous recessive females, so there's no females with hemophilia, 0%. Next, we've got our heterozygous female. This is normal blood clotting. X big H, X little h. So again, we have one quadrant that gives us this, 25%. Next, we get to our dominant male. This is a male with a dominant allele, so X big H, Y. Normal blood clotting, and you can see, upper left-hand corner, we have one of those. And finally, we have X little h, Y. This is our recessive male. This will produce hemophilia, which is the disorder. And that is 25%. Now, I want you to remember what I said about these sex-linked traits. I said that we, with these sex-linked disorders, males are much more likely to show the disorder than females. Let's look at our Punnett square. The dad over here on the left, doesn't have hemophilia. The mom up here on top doesn't have hemophilia. None of the daughters have hemophilia, but half of the sons would have hemophilia. So you can see that the Punnett squares will always back up what I said. No matter how you do it, guys are always more likely to get these sex-linked disorders than women because they only have one allele for them, whereas women have two.